Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today uh, I am going to take up this problem from Pathfinder, check your understanding problem 12. Uh, many students find this problem to be very scary and that's not because of the spider but uh, because of the physics involved here and the kind of calculation that's required. So without much ado, let me straight away present to you the problem. Here's the problem, cobweb and the spider locus. Okay. A cobweb thread of negligible relaxed length is stretched between points A and B on two opposite walls as shown in the figure. Okay. So this is the cobweb thread. It is stretched between points A and B. Okay. In this state, the thread makes an angle theta with the horizontal and its length and the force constant are L and K respectively. Okay. So, uh, so here this angle theta is given and its spring constant K is given. Okay. A spider of mass m crawls gradually from end A to B on this thread. So, a spider begins to crawl on this thread and uh, know that because of the mg of the spider, this thread is going to sag downwards like this. So, maybe somewhere here the spider is there at some general time. Okay. Representing the horizontal by x axis and the vertical by y axis and the point A as the origin. Find the equation of the path followed by the spider assuming that the thread obeys the Hooke's law. So uh, not mentioned in the question but you can take this point A as the origin and you can you have to find the trajectory of the spider. The equation for the trajectory of the spider. So if you want you can give it a try. I will get into my analysis right away. So one thing that is important is that uh, the thread obeys Hooke's law and the uh, uh, length of the thread itself is negligible okay so this is to be noted that thread of negligible relaxed length so you can treat this thread to be like a point spring okay so now if you want you can give it a try i'll get into my analysis straight away let's see okay so what are the concepts involved here first of all we have to understand what is a point spring so point spring means it has got uh, zero natural length so Suppose a point spring is attached to origin and stretched to a position vector r. Let us say this is a point spring at origin and somehow I stretch it uh, all the way to position vector r. Then the force applied by the uh, this uh, point spring on this uh, end will be simply minus k times r. Okay. Okay. And this can also be written as minus kx times i cap and minus ky times j cap. So, if you look at the x component of force, it is just uh, proportional to the stretching in the x direction. So, the whole uh, web is, uh, the whole uh, spring is stretched from here to here. So, it's x, x stretching is this and y stretching is this. So, x force is proportional to x stretching and y force is proportional to y stretching. You can see that minus kx i cap and minus ky j cap. Okay. So, x component of force is proportional to x component of stretching and y component of force is proportional to the y component of stretching so that's important information we can use it directly and another thing that you must have studied in your standard theory while studying springs is the combination of springs in series so if you have two springs k1 and k2 connected in series then effective spring constant of the combination is simply given as 1 by k effective is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so these are the two concepts that i'm going to use the concept of the point spring as well as the co uh, concept of springs connected in series. Okay. So now let's come to the current problem. So I've shown the coordinate of uh, 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 the spider uh, at some general x comma y. Let's say this is your origin A is the origin O. You can say. Okay. So uh, what is the stretching of the? So now uh, see we can think of now two point springs. So one point spring is stretched from the origin to the spider and the another point spring is stretched from the spider to the uh, point B. Okay. And these two uh, point springs are like, uh, uh, I mean, effectively these two are connected in series uh, to form the original uh, spring, you can say. Okay. So even though they are point springs, but still they can be treated as like two small, smaller point springs connected in series. So two smaller point springs connected in series should make the effective spring constant of the entire spring, right? So let the coordinate of the spider be x comma y. Let the two portions of the cobweb string have uh, constants uh, k1 and k2. So then by equation 2 that is 1 by k is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2. So we can see uh, say that this equation also holds for the point springs uh, because they are connected in series. Here k is the spring constant for the complete thread. Okay. So, uh, so students might get confused a little here. Uh, so what I mean here is that suppose uh, uh, this 
this is now the stretched length but this will also have some length when it is not stretched so it will be point size and then there will be another point size and these two point springs together they form the uh, the composite point spring so uh, just imagine two small point springs and they forming still an, another point spring so k1 and k2 together they form effective k so that's why i'm able to write this equation uh, because uh, imagine that this also uh, i mean the relaxed uh, two relaxed lengths form the original point springs okay uh, and the relaxed lengths of both <laughs> both these springs are also the points only okay so i hope you understood how equation 3 follows okay here k is the spring constant for the complete thread now we can also do the horizontal force balance see uh, here what is the stretching in the x direction so x is the stretching in the x direction for this one and for this one how much is the stretching so you can take the x coordinate so this coordinate is l cos theta the coordinate of b is l cos theta and this is x so stretching in k2 is uh, l cos theta minus x okay so that's why what i've written so k1 x is equal to k2 times l cos theta minus x i hope you understood this is the stretching horizontal stretching in the second spring l cos theta minus x okay now we can also do vertical force balance so so uh, here the downward force is k1 times y stretching uh, because of this and y stretching is simply y okay because we started from the origin and for this one uh, the upward force will be uh, so here the y stretching is l sin theta minus y upward force will be l sin theta minus y times k2 okay so and of course there is an mg acting downward so if you write the force balance equation downward force k1y plus mg should be equal to upward force that is k2 times l sin theta minus y so i hope you understood equation 5 also now uh, from equations 3 and 4 i can get this relation k1 is kl cos theta upon x and k2 is equal to kl cos theta upon l cos theta minus x you can simply eliminate the other things and it's not a very difficult elimination so you'll be able to easily get this one okay so k1 and k2 are expressed in terms of k and x okay k theta and x okay so now i can put this uh, k1 and k2 in equation 5 here so uh, k1 you substitute uh, kl cos theta upon x and k2 you substitute as kl cos theta upon l cos theta minus x and you put here so what do you get you get kl cos theta by x times y plus mg so we'll do kl cos theta upon l cos theta minus x into this and now you can take this here and you can take lcm and uh, multiply it out you will get uh, start getting quadratic terms i have not shown all the bulwark there's some bulwark involved here in rearranging the terms but you'll be easily able to see that you are going to get a quadratic so if you just solve for y you get uh, from equation 7 just rearranging equation 7 you get y is equal to tan theta minus mg by kl cos theta times x plus mg upon k square l square cos square theta times x square so that's my final answer okay and uh, that was the analysis of the uh, spider web or the cob web problem I hope uh, you are not scared anymore and uh, you enjoyed my analysis and if you did enjoy my analysis please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with all of your friends who are preparing for JE or Olympiads through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever cord you use for uh, networking with your fellow students. And most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you know what to do. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a video for all of you frequently. And thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.